So yesterday, uh, Chrisley knows best, Julie and Todd Chrisley were found guilty of all charges. So this video is about what comes next for them. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. Um, I'm so mixed about how I feel about that verdict. It is um, life-changing for the kids, life-changing. A few things. Up and Adam is, I think, interviewing Jen Shaw tonight and or later today and tomorrow, so you should tune into his channel for that. I will be watching it and covering it. I think that it's a huge mistake for her to do any interviews with anyone before her trial, but I'm happy for Adam because it's going to be really, i um, sure, a great interview and what a coup. But uh, I, I can't imagine that her lawyers are happy that she's doing that. I think somehow Jen believes that, you know, juries are really decided, the verdicts are decided on public opinion and not so much the evidence. And so that is, if it's true, and it could be true in today's world, I don't know. I haven't done a recent, I haven't read any recent analysis of a jury's decision-making procedure. They're supposed to go strictly off, you know, evidence and rules that are given to them, but do they really? And I don't, I mean, I would love to read a new, if anyone finds a report uh, about any studies that have been done on that recently, I'd love to know. But I think um, the feeling is that, you know, could it be that a jury is swayed by public opinion, even though they're not supposed to be? Um, so maybe that's why Jen's doing the interview is to try to mitigate um, her evidence and get people on side. So perhaps that's so her strategy. I will be covering Jen's trial in July when it comes about because I'm, I'm really, really interested in the subject matter. As you guys know, I was in Shaw Shocker on Hulu. And if you haven't seen it, now would be the time because it's the jury trials coming up and um, almost everyone's plead out except for Jen. So it's really, I think, going to be another big uh, event, you know, in the true crime arena, if you guys are interested in like law and order and all that stuff. Um, Chris Lee, uh, and his wife, Todd Chrisley and Julie Chrisley, have been found guilty on all charges. It was announced yesterday around 3 p.m. Uh, they have now uh, federal tax evasion charges that have been they've been found guilty of, and you know, uh, wire fraud, um, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and some other things. Um, you know, all related to fraud, basically. So I would imagine that he's going to appeal on a basis of law, a technical argument, or maybe he's going to appeal um, on a misunderstanding of ed evidence or mispresentation of evidence that can happen. I don't think he has much to lose. When you go, when you choose to go to a jury trial, you are allowed um, the opportunity to appeal. Um, when you obviously do a, a plea deal and you plead guilty, you get a lighter sentence, but you don't have the option to ever change your plea and appeal. So you give up that right. So I would say that Todd and Julie Chrisley are really scared at this moment in time, and so are their kids um, and their grandchildren. <laughs> and I'd be saying E is trying to figure out what to do at this moment because E Television Renewed, as I mentioned, Chrisley knows best. And it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do the show. So I'm sure he is scrambling at this moment to figure out what to do. Anyway, what happens next is they're going to end up um, having three months usually before they're sentenced. And they're going to have a whole, whole financial audit done of them with an officer. And then they are going to meet with a probation officer who's going to do a deep dive into their past all of their personal histories. This is if they don't appeal. Um, they're gonna wanna know like, were they abused or, you know, were they molested? You know, all the, the details of their existence in, you know, from the beginning of time. Then they're gonna start to do a calculation. The pro a probation officer is gonna do a calculation. And the calculation is going to 
first start with a base level offense, which I believe for wire fraud is seven or eight. And it's like a point system, like a video game. So, um, and the judge, by the way, doesn't have to follow. It's just a guideline. So you could have a judge that just like says, I hate these people, I'm gonna put them in jail forever, but they don't usually, they usually follow the sentencing guidelines. But anyway, um, so they'll say, okay, so they have a base level offense of seven or eight. Now they have, um, it's possible that they have multiple base level offenses. I have actually never experienced someone getting a guilty charge. I've never calculated someone getting a guilty charge with multiple base offenses that are different. So I don't know if they give them seven points for each one. Let's just one. assume they don't for the purposes of this. And let's assume that they give them a base level offense for their wire fraud for a, a, that's an eight, okay? Since they didn't um, help the government prosecute them or admit wrongdoing, they won't get any benefits of any subtraction of points. So then the government, if they want, can add points on the following basis. They can add anywhere between one and three points if they uh, take the position that someone was a mastermind in the operation. They can take in consideration in this case how many uh, banks were and people were defrauded and um, they can put something, you know, they can put points in related to that. And then depending on the amount of money they're gonna choose to say that they owe back, um, that will also affect their points. So for example, I did um, a tally. If, if indeed the prosecutor decides to say, like they said in their uh, trial, that we think you took 20 million in loans and used it for your lavish lifestyle fraudulently, they may say, well, we want you to pay back 20 million. Well, if it's, under, if it's 20 million and under, um, it goes up 20 points off their base level offense. If it's over 20 million, it goes up 22 points. Okay, so get an extra two which is, can make all the difference in the world, which I'll explain in a minute. So let's assume that we, we're just gonna do the real basic here. So let's just assume the, the government says, okay, we're gonna give them one base level offense of seven points, and we're, we are gonna hold them accountable for 20 million, but not any $1 above 20, not 20 million in one buck, right? Because if it's one buck, it goes up. So we're just gonna hold it right at 20 million. So then, it goes up 20 points. So then the government would, they would feel pretty generous with that actually, because they could go another three or four points higher if they wanted to, but let's say they're like, listen, this is a lot of time as it is, so they don't need to. So they'll say, all right, we're gonna be really generous with you. We're gonna give you a base level offense of seven for your fraud. We're gonna not give you any other base level offense points. We're going to add another 20 points for 20 million though. And we are gonna expect you to pay back all 20 million. So then what they do is it'll be, uh, their total point number then is 27. Now that puts them in a zone C, okay? Right on the top of zone C. Zone C is 70 to 87 months in prison, depending on what the judge wants to do, the high end or the low end. Okay, so now I'm gonna demonstrate how every point counts. Let's say that the government decides to do a base level offense on wire fraud of seven points. And they decide, no, you know what? The Chrisleys owe 20 million and $30. That's what we think. Because they go over the 20 million by $30, now the Chrisleys are looking at 22 points above their base level offense, okay? So now it's 22 plus seven, that's 29 points. Okay, now 29 points, puts them at zone D. And zone D, uh, level 29 approximately, right? Is 87 months to 108 months, okay? So we're talking with each little smidgy thingy, one little point, you lose a year of your life in prison, okay? So, so based on my calculations, if the Chrisleys don't appeal, and the US government decides to hold them accountable for the 20 million that they allege they took for their lavish lifestyle, they're looking at on the low end, seven years in prison.
and on the high end, eight years. And a lot of people think you can get time off for good behavior in federal prison. Well, you can, but it can never ever be more than 15% of your overall time. 15%, not once, not 1% 1 over. No matter if you're like Betty Crocker in there, you're never getting more than that. So in this particular case, if they're at like, let's say seven to eight years, they're really only looking for, they're only looking at maybe a year and a half off, a little bit under a year and a half off. So, cause seven months would be seven years, would be 10%. And then so you if figure, they got seven years, the most they could get off for good behavior would be 10 months or 10 and a half months off the seven years. So they're still looking at like six years in prison. Now, this is life-changing time. You know, you basically, your kids are all going to be grown up that are little. You know, you're um, probably not going to stay married, you know, because you're not going to see your significant other for such a long time. You probably won't even know who they are anymore by the time they get out. Like technology will be totally different. So, and at, you know, older ages, like 50 plus and, and, you know, it's really, really, it's, you know, it's, you could die in prison. I've had friends that were very young die in prison. So I just want to say, it sucks. This is serious. The bottom line, the Chrisleys, Julie and Todd Chrisley's life is about to be completely nuked and they will never be the same. And I would say they'll never recover in their lifetime. And that's the truth. It's a really, really, um, the system is really, really intense in the U.S. And, you know, um, you're not really designed to recover from it. It's kind of like, you know, how could I say? It's like almost, a, it's, it's really like, yeah, it's, you're not designed to recover from it ever. But hopefully their kids end up okay. My uh, prayers go out to the kids. So this is really a goodbye message to Todd and Julie Chrisley because I think this is it, unfortunately, especially for their fans. They're going to be really sad. They're going to miss them. Another very spooky reminder to not take unnecessary risks ever with yourself and your freedom, okay? Follow all the rules. All right, loves. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. You never know what's going to happen on this channel.